Hello, and thanks for joining us on this uh, second panel today. Um, we will be talking for the next 45 minutes about advanced ad products and strategy on AVOD per players. And I'm really happy to welcome four speakers with us. Uh, so just as a reminder for our audiences, you can ask your questions throughout the session in the Q&A box, uh, which is on the bottom right of, uh, of your screen. Um, and we will be talking for for uh, this session about European uh, AVOD players uh, with a focus on German speaking markets. Uh, so why they chose the ad supported business model for their OTT platforms, uh, also the interest and challenges of ad insertion on digital pure players. Uh, there we'll be talking about targeting, ad acceptance, and also viewability metrics and what they can, how they can enrich uh, advertising um, strategies. And then we will also talk about ad sales strategies for those platforms. So who, uh, who is selling the inventories and uh, on which, uh, which transactional mode. So let's start with introducing all of our speakers. Uh, I'm really happy to welcome with us uh, Sasha Sojakovic from Join. He's the VP Engineering. Hi. Uh, then we have uh, Jan Van Dam uh, from Pluto TV. He's the VP International Ad Business. And then we have uh, Philip Rottermoon, the CEO of Watch4, and Roni Lutzi, the CEO okay. of Relax TV. Hi, everyone. And thanks Hello. for joining us. Hi. <coughs> Uh, so to start, uh, to kick off this topic, I would like to have a first round of the table to see a little bit uh, what kind of service you're working for and uh, what is your attribution in this and also why you chose uh, the AVOD business model for this uh, OTT player we work with. So maybe we can start with, uh, with Sasha. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so I would uh, say we as join. Um, I in a super comfortable situation with um, two strong shareholders, so Discovery and uh, um, Prozim, Satines. And um, this allows us at least to give our customers the best of both worlds. So a full uh, SVOD offering and as well AVOD experience uh, that is in demand in the market. I mean, uh, we see uh, uh, that, that uh, the market seems to reach a certain level, I would say, of maturity with SVOD competitors. So AVOD is also like the next... Um, 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 the next uh, um, thing, which is which is kind of demanded, so um, from that perspective, is a, is a clear strategy for us as well. Um, we combine local content um, and we focus on local co uh, content uh, with international premium productions like our own stuff, like Jerk, Slavic, and and um, others. And um, on Join, we see uh, we see that we we offer like a unique experience uh, with more than sixty pay and free TV live channels extensive media libraries and a huge portfolio uh, of an um, on-demand content. So uh, from, that, from that perspective, it's a clear strategy. So AVOD is a clear strategy for us. We are always interested in new and uh, existing partnerships that can deliver the right content for our users. So on Join, you can extend the reach of your content and embed it in a pretty innovative way, um, uh, which is an unparalleled um, 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 in, if it, in regards of user experience. Because um, we see us as the next generation entertainment platform under neutral governance and branding. And that's, that's I think, the most uh, beneficial thing uh, at Join. So, um, yeah, that's, that's in short. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, Join is pushed by podcasters. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a BVOD model with, uh, with an ad-supported uh, site. And then we also have three other speakers which are representing uh, AVOD pure players. Um, so why going for this uh, for this model? Maybe uh, Jan, if you wanna if you wanna take the, the lead on that. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sasha, and thanks, Lee. Um, and hi, everyone. So firstly, my name is Jan. Um, I'm, I'm in charge of the international ad business and monetization at Pluto TV as a part of Icom CBS. So my role is mainly about having an answer to the question how to translate streaming traffic into actual ad revenues and obviously through optimized ad setup. Um, but to come back to your question, so about our journey into AVA, so let me drop a few words about Pluto, especially for those who are not really familiar with the product. This Pluto was founded in the US um, back in 2014 and everything we've been doing so far is kind, kind of turning around the SVOD and pure on demand approach while being 100% for free without any registration wall with a live TV component and an on-demand section attached. So, and today we do that in more than 25 countries. 
Uh, but it's incredibly important to consider that our live TV piece is really the focus part. So that's the heart of Pluto, um, especially in the German speaking market. So that depends country by country. But over here, the live TV piece, the live TV section is really our focus. And it's not just bringing the classic broadcast channels into a digital stream. So we have curated live channels with localized content country by country. And that's why we, and also international markets, call us a fast platform. And fast means free ad supported streaming TV. So this, I think it's worth saying that this separate fast classification might not be very popular in German speaking markets right now, but um, I'm sure it will be as soon as the market and the people are more used to those platforms. But I mean, I'm happy to have the other gentleman in the call um, to talk about different platforms and not only Pluto and, uh, and FAST. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, Philippe, you're, uh, you're working with uh, Watch4. So uh, it's, also a, it's also an ABOD, uh, ABOD platform uh, which started in the German speaking market. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, um, we, we started exactly the opposite side than Pluto did it. We, we started not as, as a you know, as a focus on linear, we, we started as a pure AVOD or VOD player in the beginning, and we just launched this year our first uh, fast channels in German-speaking territories as well as in the UK because that's our second biggest market. Um, and um, um, the, the reason why we picked um, AVOD is a little bit, you know, Sasha explained that earlier. The SVOD market is already quite mature, and the big brands um, um, started all their own, own streaming services. So it's a, it's a it's a different type of content game, and and we think um, in the AVOD world, and you know, let's say AVOD slash fast, there's still um, a lot of room to grow. And um, I always compare this a little bit with pay TV and free TV. You know, um, there have been um, you know 20, 30 years ago, if you look at the German speaking territories, there have been obviously public broadcasters, and then you know there was one pay TV station, and then another one, but then the market was kind of um, kind of fed in the free TV world, whereas you know, um, we, we, we had, as I said, the, the three public broadcasters, then all of a sudden uh, RTL came and uh, Set one came and ProSieben came. And, you know, we had seven channels, we had 10 channels. And even today they're launched new channels every year. And we have, you know, a hundred plus channels and everyone gets a piece of the, of the cake. And, and, and we see that in the, in the AVOD or the AVOD slash fast world, the same thing. There will be Definitely more players than 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 in the free world. There's certainly big ones, you know, in, 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 in comparison to linear TV, but there are also smaller ones, and that's where we see, um, uh, you know, a big big opportunity for for ourselves and definitely for everyone who's on the panel here. Thank you, Philip. Uh, Roni, I'm going coming to you now. Um, so you launched a Relax TV and focusing on the <coughs> connected TV environment. Can you develop a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I think um, the other gentleman already said a lot, you know, why we're in the market. Um, so, but I would like to add that, yes, we concentrated in the beginning on only on connected TVs with our fast AWOT service. So I would say it's pretty from the, from the feature set, it's very similar to Pluto. Um, but um, so we went further than the connected TV. So by the end of the year, we will have an app or service available on pretty much every hardware device if it's streamer mobile or whatever and i think we will be like have launched in like 28 countries um from a from a positioning point of view we try um to differentiate a bit or you know follow the beauty of the internet connection on this connected device so if i for example take join is you know join is an extension of what, for example, Plus Even Sat 1 have always done, you know, with also from the content having its own production. Like I would say it's an extension of the traditional business. And I find that the beauty on the internet connection is that, you know, um, the additional cost, you know, to make a new channel with a certain interest group, you know, is minimal. While it always in linear TV, was you know a huge investment to do a new channel and you had to reach a certain group you know to have a return on an investment and as an uh, as a uh, in online service you know we can just add a new channel if we hear somewhere that in Ukraine it's super popular to uh, have a table tennis channel you know we can just do it if we have the content so the additional cost per channel are minimal and we 
and we only have costs if someone is watching it and then we can advertise it. So, and that is a great model because we have costs if someone watching it, but then we also have the chance, you know, to advertise against it. And that is, having said that, this is also a bit where we are trying to position um, because there is, in every country, there is an s word there, you know, there is a vote having, you know, all the, uh, all the, uh, let's say, international movies, available and we try to we call it premium niche so we try to concentrate on content that is locally or has a local awareness to some degree thank you um so i would like to ask a question now about the ad formats that uh, you have on your platform just so our our audiences can understand and grasp uh, what 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 you're actually selling to monetize the your asset So um, you mentioned channels, fast channels, but also on demand. Uh, so I would like to know from each of you what uh, what kind of uh, ad formats are sold, whether it's mid or pre-rolls, uh, if it's a uh, live advert, uh, if you also have display ads to monetize the, the platform itself. Um, maybe Philippe, if you want to start. Uh, yeah, basically we we only focusing on on in stream advertising, meaning pre mid and post rolls. Um, obviously, in the channels, it's it's classic um, ad breaks um, at a certain ad schedule, which which we define depending on territories, also on um, uh, local rules uh, in terms of the, the 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 broadcast rules provided by the by the media authorities. Um, really, in the early days, we tried display um, ads on, on, on our desktop services, but we, we felt it's more disturbing for the user rather than a benefit. And then also prices on display ads are you know very low unless mm. you take like full page takeovers and things like that. Uh, we we thought it's not, um, you know, we want to have to focus on the content and, and rather run relevant ads throughout the content. We think that's a You know, we want to have a television-like experience. That's very important to us, and you know, we don't want to annoy the users with all kind of blinking banners around <laughs> around the good content. So that's that's not nice. Uh, Jan on Pluto, what is sold? Similar. So it's it's um, very simple because we have digital ad pods or digital ad breaks. So that's what you usually see on fast products. Um, so sometimes it's called ad pods, sometimes ad breaks. You name it, um, but. Usually you have or you experience less ad intensity within these ad pods, at least compared to classic linear TV. Um, and in the end, it's being filled with a variety of ads, um, but it's not classified as a classic pre or mid roll. Of course, we talk about in-stream ads, but we have TV-like digital ad breaks um, in between content pieces. So, but that is also a huge advantage, at least for the user, um, in terms of the user experience, because there's no obstacle or no hurdle for the user. Once he downloads the app, he can directly join, uh, jump into the content and enjoy uh, a certain show. Um, and then, as in classic TV, we have smoothly integrated digital ad pods, but with less ad intensity. So that's more or less very basic, but of course, behind that or beyond that from a business perspective, it's a huge challenge to fill that properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Juani, on Relax? Yes, so we, uh, in, in the live streams, we work uh, as well with digital app pods. And um, if you move then to the VOD section, it's classic pre-rolls, mid-rolls uh, during the consum consumption of the content. And Sasha, for join? Um, similar to what the gentleman said, so it's uh, pre and mid rows, and uh, we stick to the terming because it is pre and mid rows. We don't mind if it's uh, called just in content advertisement or whatnot. So uh, the interesting thing here is uh, how we serve it. So we serve uh, despite the current need for common targeting, such as gender, age, um, uh, um, or um, others. Um, when we talk about extension, how we target, um, uh, we, we expand it. So we talk about contextual targeting and, and intelligent ad, ad, um, ad targeting, as, as Philip also mentioned. Also the ad density uh, should be reduced to a, to a minimum level where we see, okay, that the user is, is willing to stay longer to consume our content and still is accepting the ads. Um, and I think this is, this is the basis for us. So our goal is um, not to massively disturb the user with the advertising, and thus break our personal promise to user himself and subsequently kind of um, the advertising effectiveness promise for, uh, from my perspective, because uh, showing too, mu too much ads means also there is no effecti effectiveness of any advertising. So thus our goal is always kind of to achieve the 
the best possible, let's call it balance between advertising load and, and user acceptance. And in order to understand our users, we constantly try kind of to analyze the feedback of the behavior. So the both sides can ultimately benefit from it. So what criteria goes into it? For instance, screen size, is it a big screen? Is it a small screen? Is it using a lean back or forward mode? Is it the location? Is it the time? Is it the weather? For instance, in Hamburg, a lousy weather at the moment, as we see it around his background. Um, is it, is it um, uh, um, my Wi-Fi connection? Is it the connection quality kind of? Uh, what am I watching, the contextual part? All of this determines kind of the control of join and also the technology behind it. So it means also, do we serve server side? Do we serve, serve uh, client side? Do we serve, uh, serve a hybrid model? Um, and and um, um, this, is, this is super important for us because of the choice, like, uh, let's say this way, server side delivery uh, 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 is, is sometimes useful with optimal transcoded assets for adaptive streaming, for instance. But if I see that the user is on the run somewhere in the train with a lousy Wi-Fi connection, uh, I can be more cost neutral and choose a cost neutral variant without reducing the quality for, for the user, which means as well, we do it more intelligently. But again, it's super customer centric and really looking like showing as less ads to keep the user satisfied so that the advertising effectiveness is there. Because as you know, like seeing the wrong ad at, this, at, the, at a wrong uh, time, it has a negative, I would say, uh, impact. So that's that's what we are kind of believing in at Join. Yeah, indeed. So I would turn to the other speakers now to ask a similar question. Uh, so what kind of uh, what kind of information are you basing your targeting uh, on? Uh, what is interesting for you, and also what kind of uh, what kind of information can you gather on the users from your OTT platforms? Uh, maybe Ronnie. Yeah, so we are also following a model that the user does not need to re register. So um, that makes it quite easy to start. And also you do not have like a lot of GDPR issues. Um, and I think, you know, since this service does viewing time only, you know, it's, you can also learn a lot about the user without asking something because you learn about the user by track, not tracking or seeing what he watches and when he watches it. So we do, uh, we, we will shortly introduce like a tool that on a certain device, we will, you know, manage own channels. So it's for example, Ronnie's channel, because we can see on a device that for example, in the morning, there is a morning show uh, after the kindergarten pickup, there is, I don't know, a kid show and the evening there is a crime show. So simply out of this information, since we have the back channel from the device, we can build customized interest channels for the user and that is um i mean that is a really strong vehicle for ad uh, advertisers and but also as jan already said you know we are not as far in europe as we are for example in the us but you know all this information is useful and all this information will help to uh, you know to make a proposition including advertisement that hopefully one day a user will only see advertisement which to some degree is useful for him and also that will be useful for you know the companies putting out the budget for the advertisement to reach people that are interested in their stuff mm -hmm. uh, Philippe are, is watch for also on a not, not logged environment and uh, how does that uh, influence the way that you t do Targeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, currently also the user doesn't have, uh, there's no login available. It means you want to have it as easy, accessible as possible. Um, we are currently working on a, that's that's what I'm allowed to say. We're currently working on a brand relaunch because um, in, we have a different brand in other territories and we will have something unified from, from uh, end of Q1 next year. With that relaunch, we will introduce user login, but it's not mandatory. So it's it's up to the user and it will give them features like, you know, uh, what do you expect from Netflix, for example, uh, continue watching cross devices and and, and and favorite lists and these kind of things. But again, it's not mandatory. So we, we, we can gather some information there, but <clears throat> I guess in particular, since we see a big shift, obviously from the web to more um, to apps on connected devices, It's a question what kind of information you have. And then on top of that, next year, um, yeah, uh, no, no, 2023, it's almost already, we are already at the end of the year, but cookies will disappear. So it will be harder to target. Um, 
in the end, it's not our, um, how should I say, um, since we're working with ad sales houses, you know, we, we don't do direct sales. Um, um, uh, we, we don't care so much, but of course we have to support our ad sales houses, you know, to give them as much information as possible. So we're currently working on a solution where we can um, cluster the content in the right way um, that we run back information, what kind of audience could fit into that particular content piece. Um, obviously the genre, this is the easiest classification. You have drama, you have action, you have crime. But of course you can go way deeper into the content and figuring out what kind of, you know, what kind of user could sit now in front of the television due to their content and then find the right advertiser for that. That's a project we're working on and, and, and hopefully can, you know, if we, if we speak in six months from now, I probably can give you a little bit more information about what exactly we want to do. But that's kind of the idea because also, I mean, look, if, you know, like look at Apple uh, in the phones, if you download a new app or if there's an update, you know, the phone always asks you, um, do you want to be tracked or not? And I guess 99% will say no and, and, and therefore you know, don't have any information about the users. So you have to come up with alternative ways how to target um, the advertising to, to the user. If you don't know anything about the user, you have to try to find what kind of user could watch that particular content. And that's a direction where we're going into. So yeah, you, you mentioned this challenge also that uh, audiences have to agree to targeting um, and that's, uh, that we see more and more users being aware that, uh, that they're being targeted um, based on personal information or preferences and, and, and their usages. Um, but they don't necessarily understand uh, how their personal information are protected and if, exactly. if that's the case, yeah. I mean, we know it is, but uh, sometimes the audiences are not educated to those, uh, to those challenges. Um, how do audiences react to, to this, uh, this new approach of targeting on, uh, on the digital players, especially because it's not really the case on linear TV? Sasha, mm -hmm. do you see some, some challenges with that? So, of course, uh, I mean, I can just completely agree with what you were saying and Philip and probably all of us will, will agree on that. There is a big challenge for us. This is a big challenge for us. So you will have uh, um, non-concentrates, which, will, which will, uh, um, I, I would say, vary by platform. So this is also what we are seeing. There is a, a standard rate where I would say, okay, this is where we are um, um, at the moment. Um, and this is but just a clear consequence of, 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 uh, of an additional query window. So there is a difference if I'm on a web uh, or desktop computer where I can easily use my mouse or uh, if I'm on, on a CTV device, um, it, it's a difference. So um, the users feel insecure with it, of course, I think so, but our value proposition um, is, is strong. And so we continue to believe that at least the rates will stay in a, healthy spectrum, let's call it that way. Um, uh, but we are aiming on a, on a simple uh, way of, of giving the user the opportunity to accept the content. And as well, as you mentioned, uh, um, to, to, to show them what is happening with, uh, with your data so that they exactly know, okay, what is it used for? And that's a trade-off, of course. We need the data to do a proper advertising. If we are not able to do so, then we start a vicious circle, which means targeting is not that good. Probably at the at the beginning, till the market is is uh, the market must get there. But till till everyone is focused on 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 hard facts, kinda, uh, it will be probably a downtrend with it, with uh, ECPMs. That's just my assumption, and and we should take care that that the whole business uh, should act transparently. Otherwise, again, we end up in a vicious circle. People will try to 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 protect their data, which means that we have to do something else to, to get the data, um, maybe add some other trackers, which must be there in the list. This, this causes even more mistrust. And, and this is something we have to, to, to um, yeah, this is challenging for us and we have to tackle together with, with the government as well. I don't think that, that it's just solely our purpose to do so. It's also the governments who should help us there to explain to people what is happening, why are we doing that, so that everyone at least uh, reaches um, um, a decent state of understanding what's going on. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's also related to the challenge of ad acceptance, because as you mentioned, if targeting is not so good, then uh, we will need to monetize more ads to, to on the platform. And then exactly. the, the viewers also will get more ads. Uh, maybe Jan, you can you can also jump on on this question. Uh, what are the ad accept? What is the ad acceptance on Pluto? Do you have already uh, metrics on completion rate and so on that you can share with us? And that that shows uh, something that you mentioned already before that uh, ad are, uh, ads on uh, OTT players are less than on linear TV. That's one of the strengths of those platforms. Yeah, sure. But before I do that, I just want to add something to what Sasha already perfectly summarized. But User education is really a huge challenge. I mean, how are users supposed to understand that when even the entire ad industry is struggling, right? So that's, I mean, that's that's not a balance. And I personally don't see a lot of friction points in there. So, because I mean, we are more or less a pure CTV player and we don't analyze too many sensitive data points and we don't need cookies and all that stuff. Um, it's just a minimum set of data but anyway, so I think the user education in the end, because the entire ad industry has a huge challenge, this is still, there's, there's still a lot of stuff to do in the future. But to come back to your, to your other question, so ad acceptance. I consider ad acceptance also as a part of the entire user experience. So again, as the journey starts by opening the app, directly enjoy content without any obstacles or hurdles or something. And then ad breaks will be inserted smoothly while watching the show. Um, and this is something which is reflected in insanely high completion rates. But I mean, I have to admit that this is, that a high VTR is not something you need about Pluto. So this is something I think Sasha, Ronnie and Philip can also offer that because that's the beauty of premium AVOD and CTV platforms. So the media quality is definitely something which comes by design. So it's, at least by speaking of CTV, uh, of CTV environment. So no clutter, full screen by design and all that stuff. And I think media quality should be reflected in pricing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ronnie, Philippe, can, do you want to add something on that? Yeah, I think, I mean, um, quality, that's, that's certainly something. I remember when we started with Watch 4, uh, we had several ad sales houses in the German speaking markets. And, and, you know, some of those, they, you know, they didn't understand the difference between a 30 second user generated piece of content or like a $10 million production. So they would sell the same piece of content for, let's say five years, just as, a, as, a, as an example. And it, it took us a, a while to, first of all, educate at sales houses on one end, that's, you know, that's a, a different approach here. Um, and that's also why we ended up having exclusive ad sales houses in our key territories, in particular um, Sky Media. That's no, that's no, uh, it's no secret. Ones which understand TV and which understand high quality content, because if you work with an ad sales house, which is you know originally coming from the display space, and you know trying to get some in-stream or outstream inventory, no matter what, they have a completely different approach on selling these spots than 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 a TV ad sales house such as Sky Media or even 7.1 uh, EP, um, um, of course, um, you know, but they didn't like to, us, to work with us, obviously, because we had competition, which absolutely makes sense. But with Sky, we have a, we have a great partner here they, and they understand how to sell TV. And, and I think you know, that's, you know, we, we are the new TV, All everyone who's, who's on that uh, panel today, we are the forefront of new TV. And, 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 and that's, that's the reason why we need ad sales house who understand that business. Mm -hmm. So that dr drives me to my uh, to my next question. Actually, what are your ad sales strategy? And the first question with that would be, how do you sell uh, your inventories? So, Philip, you already mentioned that uh, you have an exclusive partnership with uh, with an ad sales house in your operating market. Um, Sasha, I'm turning to you now. How is uh, how is join uh, join inventories sold? Um, yep. To, to pretty simple, uh, uh, we have partnerships, uh, uh, but we, of course, where we focus strongly on marketing with our strong shareholder, Semwa Media. So this is our uh, uh, main partner. Nevertheless, the content partner <clears throat> can also shape his marketing preference to join together with us. This is the freedom on, a, on such a, um, 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 a neutral governance and branding platform. So yeah, that's mostly it. We are now aiming to support our, our partnership with uh, Semo Media um, in, in the first place. Honey, mm -hmm. uh, are you working more with uh, direct ad sales or with uh, programmatic platforms? 
No, we are at the and at the moment working only in partnerships. Um, since you know we started one year ago and focusing a lot on growth um, and you know, on being on all devices and launching new countries. So that is uh, is simply something we uh, did not have you know resources for to build that up in peril. But certainly, I think you know once you have launched in a country and if you wanna you know if you wanna become really strong. I think there. I think you you need to have direct you know direct sales teams. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for you know launching and uh, in in the time frame since we started, it's just fine. But it's definitely you know our next step in the countries where we want to grow stronger. Um, you know to build that up. Yeah, of course, because building it building an in-house team is also cost-consuming. Um, yeah, and for especially for you know all the countries we are targeting. So. Um, It's, each, that's, each it's market quite, has its yeah i mean you need team. also the company you know we need also some some time to breathe while growing so um yeah yeah that's true but that's certainly uh, the, the next thing to do yeah non crypto as a what, what's the strategy do you have an in in-house team do you work rather with direct ad sales depending on the markets i guess um, yeah, so at Pluto, we have been approaching monetization strategy a bit different. So we collaborate with multiple partners on purpose. So there's no exclusive sales representative. Of course, they are preferred peers, but not an exclusive one. Um, and we made it our task to steer our own waterfall with different pipes in there. And over there, we distinguish direct sales and programmatic partners on the other hand side. But we are fully in control of that. And For us, that means independence. So we can steer our own setup and our own waterfall and look for the highest price and volume and got a good view on the market, to be honest. Um, and it only make, but it only makes sense. So all this steering intelligence only makes sense if there's more demand than supply. And I think if we talk about CTV, for example, we are currently in that position that there is more demand than supply and, and I think that tipping point is something we experienced early that this summer, so very, very early this year. Um, but uh, again, I think in the end, it's, it's worth mentioning that this independent stack and this control on our side to steer the waterfall, this is something special about our monetization strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay with you and ask you, because you mentioned the programmatic, it's also one, uh, one of the, the big perks of working on a digital environment. Uh, to be able to automatize the uh, ad sales. How do you see uh, programmatic ad sales scaling, especially in, uh, in German-speaking markets? Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would like to combine that again with CTV because CTV is a fast-moving train at the moment and programmatic as well, of course, it always has been. But um, the level of speed and adoption in different countries is different. So you have different viewing patterns, different languages, but also different speed of adoption, especially around programmatic and CTV. Um, so UK is currently leading the programmatic adoption over here in Europe. So at least if we consider UK still as a European country, but back to the German speaking markets. So especially this year, it was really emerging. So. We experienced even some seasons where programmatic sales, and while speaking about programmatic, it's extremely important to, to define that. So I look at programmatic um, as auction models, not programmatic guaranteed. So I consider programmatic guarantee also as a direct sales part, because just it's just the way you execute it through, through different systems. But again, so we experienced some seasons where programmatic sales outpaced The direct sales part for the first time in Germany. And I think that's pretty impressive. Um, and that also shows that in the future, there might be a game changer, especially considering the, the current situation of the market. Everyone's saying, still saying, okay, Prozeven and RTL are still you, two huge houses in the market and they control it. But I think um, that's not sustainable anymore, to be honest. So, because in this programmatic game, and again, talking about auction. There will be a game changer, and we also see the first trend going into, towards that direction, that there's more competition and, and more balance in the market in the future. If I may add just something to that, uh, it makes perfectly sense what, what uh, Jan is saying, um, and, and also the, the part with uh, programmatic guaranteed, for instance, that this shouldn't be kind of, it is programmatic, but it's, it's maybe counted into, into direct sales, which is just a direct deal, kind of using just the programmatic stack. But I also have to say what Ronnie is saying is also important. It depends on the market, 
but in for instance in germany you have to need a strong um, you have to have a strong direct sales uh, uh, um, behind your back otherwise it won't scale because this is still uh, the, the majority still the majority in germany you have uh, um, maybe month or or um, seasonalities where you can see uh, it's shifting and um, i also strongly believe that this will change in the future because uh, uk shows how it it it, it might work um, but we are not there at the moment that's that's how i see it but that's that's what we that's why we all support like both both approaches like we are open to 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 different uh, uh, to, to to everything kind of if, if it comes to direct or programmatic and support also new ways of of, of uh, selling partnerships uh, really combined with the product so really user centric forms which are maybe not given at the moment at this stage uh, sorry Ronnie yeah yeah uh, thanks uh, I just wanted to, uh, to add I announced myself that I wanted to add something. So uh, what I have seen also, in the, especially in the last two months, that you know, uh, many or a lot of companies that have been traditionally only been active in the pure linear, you know, advertisement space, that it, it seems like they get, all get a bit nervous because they're realizing that you know a huge amount of viewing time will sooner or later uh, go into OTT. And, and in there, in this ODT space, you know, the traditional gatekeeper to the living room is not the operator or the, uh, the well, gatekeeper is a bit hard or the, the broadcaster. It's, you know, absolutely new players, you know, who, who uh, 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 monitor, or, you know, give the viewing time. So that could be a join, a relax, a Pluto, but not also that the gatekeeper control moves from an operator to the one controlling the CTV system. So, you know, because I, us and join and Pluto, we have to deal with Android TV or Samsung, you know, to get access to the viewing time. So, you know, there is, and I, I feel that, I see that for a long time, that's why I'm in this business, but you know, it's only now that very traditional companies see that they might have a total loss of access if they don't move now. Because all you know, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole value chain is about to about to be changed, and the ones who make the decision who can access the living room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just got a um, we just got a question from the audience, um, which will rather be on the editorial con editorial lines. Do you believe only ad, ad based content offers without subscription fee is sustainable? And if yes, what is the minimum market size for content providers and OTT players to build a sustainable ad based business? Um, Sasha, you want to start? Um, I can take that one. Um, it will be probably a little bit generic, but. Um... Do I believe uh, on ad-based content offers, so no subscription fees, is, is, if, if this is sustainable? So I would say yes and no. It depends uh, on the content as well. So uh, if you are having such a strong proposition, value proposition, I would say super, super, uh, yes, strongly yes. Uh, yeah, it's would, another yes. monetization stream for, for the content. Exactly, but if you are aiming, um, if you're not, for instance, having the such an interesting content, it depends as well on on, on other factors. How um, are you building your CMP? How do you retrieve the content? Are you thinking about so-called pure models, which are existing? I don't know if, this, if if everyone knows about it, but it's it's I think a common wording right now in Germany, like pure models, which are used by by print. Um, 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 companies like uh, Spiegel, for instance. So you have an AVOD um, a part which where you have to give your consent or you can you can su subscribe and, and use the same um, um, same offer um, mm -hmm. um, um, with, a, with a small fee. So um, it depends. So yes and no. Um, and sustainable, I would say you have to calculate very carefully your business case uh, and, and also taking in regards your concentrate, and then you will see if it's sustainable or not. But there are assumptions, I would say, on the market, and also like I mentioned before, a healthy healthy concentrate state. So if you if you take everything into account to a proper business case and and come up with the decent um, um, eCPM, uh, you can you can answer your question by yourself. I would I would just do. Oh, I hope it makes sense. Um, yeah, let me go. Ahead. I would like to add that also here, I believe, you know, nothing really changed. So 
it will just move to OTT. But I believe if you are producing a James Bond movie, you will need multi-layer monetization from cinema, TVOD, as what AVOD, because you will not be able, you know, long term, you know, to have a return on investment on such high production costs. And I'm hoping that it will stay like that because I would still like to see the next uh, James Bond movie in five years. And I think you can see that also on Netflix, that Netflix has this issue because they need to produce more and more content, you know, to keep or prevent the churn. But also they will need to think at some point, how do I open up a second monetization stream, for example, by a VOD or by TVOD first, then as what? Uh, because I believe long term, it's not sustainable, you know, putting so much money into production and only have one monetization outlet on the example uh, on Netflix as what. As well. mm -mm. And if I'm right, I think also Pluto already has some Netflix content as a what that it's a secondary monetization. I'm not sure uh, as a secondary monetization a what. I mean, as Pluto, we are not a content owner. I think that's that's important to understand. Within Viacom CBS strategy, that might be different, but just yeah. as Pluto, um, we don't co-license something or, or something. No, I, I, but I, uh, do you, uh, because I believe that Netflix needs, you know, from the production they make, they need an s -word monetization, but also an a -word. And I think I've heard that Netflix gave some of its originals to Viacom for a -word monetization. Is that already happened that already because i assume it will happen or you cannot comment on it but there there are there are definitely studios which may deal I've, with able platform to monetize uh, parts yeah, of their libraries yeah. which are not on right. premium inventories for yeah. example exactly yeah. exactly so of course in general you described an interesting case um i cannot reveal some details about that or on the, <laughs> in the background but um in general you nailed it right on the head so i completely agree um, about saying that a multi-layer monetization is key in the future. And that brings me back to the question from the audience. So I think there is evidence that we also experience a kind of fatigue about SVOD platforms, so about paid models, right? And there is definitely room for more offers. And But I think we reached a certain point in the market where also not only the tech landscape, also the user landscape is extremely fragmented because some people still enjoy these insanely long time to watch or time to decision, for example, on Netflix. Netflix is, is a great platform, but sometimes I think a recent study revealed that people on average need 10 minutes or something until the decision is made to watch, I don't know, a certain show. But on AVOD platforms, as, especially fast platforms and, and uh, the platforms here in the call, so represented in the call, I mean, the time to watch is nearly to zero, right? So this is just a two, few taps or a few clicks and then you're directly in the content. So that means time to watch 10 minutes versus zero minutes, back to your question, I think we reached a point where also the user landscape and the user needs are really fragmented and there's a huge variety of that on the market. So I think sustainable um, question mark, because only app-based app models, I mean, I'm with Pluto and I like uh, at the at supported models, but I think to have a mix of both is ideal. So at least from, from, a, from a larger perspective, from a top line view. Mm -hmm. Philip, you want to add something on that as a pure player? No, oh, I mean, I, I, I think it's sustainable. That's the reason why we're all on the call here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do that for a reason. Again, I said that earlier to uh, at the panel. I, I compare that to the, the, the free TV and the pay TV world. You know, they, they are, you know, the, the, the free TV market, I think, is six and a half or seven billion in, 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 in the German speaking territories. And we see a shift from linear to more into the fast and non linear world. And I think, yes, if you have a good library um, of content, it's sustainable. The only thing, what, you know, what we have, don't have to forget is um, AWOD or ad funded models, whether it's free TV or what we're doing, it's a mass medium. You need a lot of people that you can refinance the service. So if you are, as a content provider, more in a niche with your content, you want to do your own, own OTT service, you're probably better off with as what as a you know special kind of offering rather than a, than a free world. But if you if you have you know if you have a huge library, a vast library, um, you, and you can reach a lot of eyeballs, then you're certainly in the right place.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you all for, for joining us today. It's the end of the panel now. So um, I'm just going to invite the audiences to join us uh, after the lunch break. We'll be back at uh, 1.15 for a panel on uh, addressable TV on pay TV platforms. And we'll, we'll have uh, insights from uh, Liberty Global, but also about new initiatives being launched in Central Europe by uh, PPF Group and United Group. And the, the session will be sponsorized by Adscanner, who will talk also about measurement metrics. So uh, come back with us in, uh, in a bit more than an hour. And meanwhile, thank you, Sasha, Ian, Philip, and Roni for being with us on this session. Thank, thank you very much. Well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.